Hey everybody, Mike here. In this video, we're going to show you how we pour and finish this broom finish patio slab. Now this is an entry slab into a big building. You, as you can see, we drilled and pinned into the existing slab. We did the we did the existing concrete slab for this building too, probably a couple months in advance of this. And they just needed a nice entryway for people to get in and out of the door. So we want to make sure that the patio slab didn't move from the building slab. So we drilled it and pinned it, as you can see, with some rebar. We got some wire mesh in here, too, for reinforcement. We're also using fiber mesh in the concrete. And under the wire mesh, you can see we got those slab bolsters trying to help hold it up off the ground. That's the only problem with using wire mesh is trying to keep it up off the ground, keep it into the concrete where it actually will do some, some good. Um, that's why, you know, we always use fiber mesh in the concrete. At least we know the fibers mixed in throughout the thickness of the concrete. I'm using a 4,000 PSI concrete on this. Here in Maine, we get a lot of freeze and thaw cycles, so people tend to want to use a lot of de-icing salts. And that's just pretty bad for the concrete no matter what. So we, uh, we use our 4,000 PSI concrete on all our exterior mixes. It's just a little bit more durable, holds up a little bit better against the de-icing stuff. And then we'll come back and we'll seal this with a, with a penetrating sealer too. That kind of waterproofs the inside of the concrete. I'll have a link for that sealer we use down in the description below. So you can check that out. We seal all our exterior concrete with that type of sealer. Right now we're getting the concrete poured out. And for those of you guys that are in the concrete business... When you do a smaller job like this, do you have a, like a minimum price you charge as far as labor goes? So you have your minimum price, plus then you have your materials and your costs on top of that. I do. I know I do. Um, I don't usually do anything that's small for less than about $1,500 labor. And then I'll add my concrete, I'll add my wire, any other incidental costs I have onto that. So I have a basic square foot price that I use for doing like broom finish stuff like this. I got a basic square foot price of about, let's say, nine bucks a square foot. And what that covers, you know, that basically covers the forming, me coming in and putting up the forms, us pouring and finishing the concrete and then coming back, stripping the forms. That's, that's it. That doesn't cover any of the subgrade work, the gravel work. That's all separate. Um, and that's usually done by someone else. We don't typically do that stuff here. We specialize in just pouring and finishing concrete. So we'll sub that part out. And that part is pretty variable anyway, depending on you know where you are, what part of the country you're in. So I don't typically price that. But if I'm doing something small and the nine bucks a square foot doesn't cover enough for the profit part of it then you know you got to have a minimum charge so let me know down in the comments guys do you have a minimum charge and what's your minimum charge let's let's kind of share it with each other to help each other out so my basic minimum is 1500 bucks anything that doesn't add up to 1500 bucks and then i'll add the concrete on top of that add the wire mesh on top of that or rebar or anything else i'm using gets added to that so for a job like this, I don't know, this is about, let's say it's 10 by 32, 320 square feet, you know, times nine is about 28, 2900 bucks. So my 1500 in labor plus the concrete has to come to at least that or, or I got to add more to it in order for me to be profitable and make money every day. And that's how I kind of run things. If it's, it, I don't care if it's 10 by 10 or 5 by 10 or what. I mean, I can adjust that if I want to, but you got to start with something, and that's what I start with right there. You can see we've got a pretty dry mix we're pouring today. Let's say that was probably around a four and a half to five slump. This patio there. slopes away from yep. the building about an inch and a half. That's actually probably about nine feet out, not quite ten. I think that's a ten foot straight edge. But it's a pretty good mix. It's got quite a bit of cream and paste at the surface. You can see it's closing up pretty good under the bowl float. Just gonna run that bowl float over it twice to really close it up good. 
that's going to make the finishing process a heck of a lot easier. And we'll get that closed up and we'll just have to let it set up for a little bit before we start finishing but I'm going to show you we're going to finish this too so stick around I'm going to show you how we finish this thing. We'll cut a couple grooves in it we'll put an edge on it and we'll drag a like what I would say like a medium medium to it's not really a coarse broom probably a medium type broom finish on it because this is actually a, a project it's a building for elderly living so we definitely don't want anybody slipping and falling on this so we want to make sure we got good texture on it that's another good reason we use a penetrating sealer is we don't want to put any type of sealer on this that's a topical like acrylic film forming sealer that's going to make it slippery when it gets wet the penetrating sealers don't do that so that's why we use that one too we're cutting a couple grooves in there just for some crack control to help control shrinkage cracks plus it kind of breaks it up into three what looks like three slabs it just gives it a little bit better look than, than just leaving it one big slab concrete always cracks I don't you know you can say what you want but for the amount of time I've been doing this about 40 years if if you don't give it some place to crack then it's just gonna crack someplace it wants to <laughs> and sometimes you can even give it a place to crack like this and it still cracks where it wants to um, but in most cases if the subgrade is done right if the gravels put in if it's compacted really well if there's no clay under there no water getting under this thing it's usually gonna crack in the joint that you put in as long as you don't space them out too far I'm using what's called like it's called a funny float and that just it, it mags the surface out it kind of mags out the bull float lines seals up the surface a little bit better and just gives you a little bit better broom finish when you use something like that see Luke's inside there getting those edges by the door we don't steal trowel our finishes outside finishes here in Maine we don't want to seal the surface too much even though the broom kind of opens it up a little bit when when you steel trowel a concrete mix that has air entrainment in it you always run the risk of of uh, sealing some of that air in there and causing a bubble or a pocket that'll pop and peel later on so we'll just mag float them even if we got to mag float them twice to get them nice and tight we don't uh, we don't steel trowel any exterior concrete up here The air entrainment, for you guys that don't know, is just to help for the durability against freeze and thaw cycles. So it's basically the concrete company puts this additive in that creates all these tiny microscopic air bubbles inside the concrete. You can't really see them. And it's for water. When water gets on there and gets absorbed into the concrete, it gives the water the frozen water room to expand inside the concrete without popping the surface off so we have air entrainment in all our concrete here that's exterior and then you know when we add that sealer that penetrating sealer gets down in there and it's supposedly it, with the job of it is to get down into all those pores and those capillaries expand and block all that so the water isn't really even supposed to be able to penetrate it just kind of gets shedded off the surface of the concrete and runs off. So I'm getting the broom finish on there. You can see how that broom finish leaves a really nice texture. It's not too smooth, but it's not too rough either. So you still be able to sweep this or take a leaf blower to it if you need to clean it. But we definitely want it non-skid. We don't want anybody slipping and falling. You can see how slow and methodical I am about pulling that broom back. I want to have one nice even stroke. I don't want to stop and start. I don't want to wiggle it or jiggle it. That all shows up in those broom marks. So just one nice easy motion with the broom kind of tilted a little bit backwards just a little bit. And then to finish off around the edges we'll use that. We use a little edger just to give it a little bit of a picture frame look. 
that helps strengthen the that rounded corner a little bit so it doesn't doesn't want to chip or pop off sometimes we'll put a finish mark on the tool joints in the middle and sometimes we'll just leave them on this one we're just gonna leave them that's the basic finish so if you want to learn more about finishing concrete I've got my private membership down in the description called the concrete underground where I have all kinds of private trainings teaching you how to do this teaching how to be in business for yourself so you can check that out with a link down below but again for you guys that are new here we pour concrete every day I have put out a couple videos a week so if you like that kind of stuff go ahead down there and hit subscribe hit the like button if you like these type of videos and thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.